My name is Dr. Patrick McGann, and I'm an orthopedic surgeon in San Francisco. This is a patient-centered presentation on anterior shoulder instability or anterior shoulder dislocation. I'm a board-certified orthopedic surgeon that specializes in sports medicine. I specifically specialize in arthroscopic surgery of the shoulder and knee. I will start with a brief introduction and finish with arthroscopic footage from a surgery that I performed. The shoulder is composed of three bones, the clavicle, the humerus, and the scapula. The shoulder is a ball and socket joint. The socket is surrounded by the labrum, which deepens the socket and provides stability. Shoulder dislocation typically occurs from an anteriorly directed force on the arm when the shoulder is out and rotated. This is accompanied by a feeling of instability and pain where the shoulder feels that it is out of the joint. On physical examination, the shoulder is often completely dislocated. In other situations, the shoulder can pop out of place and then spontaneously pop back into place. When a shoulder dislocates, two things commonly occur. The first is a labral tear. The labrum is the cartilaginous ring that surrounds the shoulder socket. The labrum tears off the socket. Alternatively, the labrum can break off of the socket with an attached piece of bone. The second thing that occurs is a Hill-Sachs deformity. A Hill-Sachs deformity is an impaction of the posterior lateral humeral head on the glenoid as it dislocates anteriorly. The initial management of a shoulder dislocation is a closed reduction in the emergency department. As I stated earlier, occasionally the shoulder will dislocate and then spontaneously uh, relocate within seconds after the accident. We start with the mobilization with a sling for one to two weeks. Physical therapy is initiated in order to strengthen the rotator cuff muscles and achieve early range of motion. Surgical management is indicated in two separate occasions. The first is acute dislocations in young athletes where there is a high risk of redislocation. The second indication for surgery is chronic uh, dislocations. So in patients that have dislocated their shoulder one to two times, despite failing conservative management, then they are indicated for a shoulder arthroscopic label repair. My technique for arthroscopic label repair consists of arthroscopic label repair as well as a remplissage type procedure. The label repair addresses the labral tear which comes off the anterior glenoid. Occasionally there is a large hill sacs defect which is an impaction injury of the posterior lateral humeral head. In this case I use the remplissage procedure to fill the hill sacs defect and prevent further dislocation and engagement. Arthroscopic label repair is a successful orthopedic surgery. It results in 95% good to excellent results. However, as with any surgery, there is always a risk involved. Overall, the risk of complications is less than 5% and includes infection, stiffness, and nerve injury. In addition, there is a less than 5% risk of recurrent dislocation. Following surgery, patients are placed in a sling. We ask that they keep incisions dry for three days. After this time, the bandages may be removed and patients are allowed to shower. Patients follow up in clinic in one to two weeks, at which point physical therapy is scheduled. This is an overall recovery timeline. In general, patients wear a sling for six weeks after surgery. Um, however, during the first six weeks, we still have patients in physical therapy in order to work on range of motion and strengthening. At approximately two weeks after surgery, patients can begin using a stationary bike. At six weeks, the sling is removed and patients can begin light jogging activities. From the time period from six to 12 weeks after surgery, we focus on early uh, range of motion. Once range of motion is fully achieved approximately 12 weeks after surgery, we then begin a strengthening program. Return to full sports and activities occurs approximately four to six months postoperatively. This is arthroscopic footage of a surgery I personally uh, performed. This is the MRI uh, showing the labral tear as well as the hill sacs deformity of the humeral head. These are two arthroscopic pictures. The picture on the left which shows the exposed red bone is a picture of a hill sacs impaction deformity of the posterior lateral humeral head. The picture on the right 
shows a labral tear off the anterior inferior glenoid. This is arthroscopic footage showing my shaver in the joint. The first part of the surgery is to clean up the labral tear in the torn labrum. My shaver at this point is between the socket, which is known as the glenoid, and the labrum, which has completely fallen off the glenoid. Behind my shaver, you can see the torn uh, labrum, which is completely detached from the glenoid. I use my shaver to create a nice bleeding bone base, which will allow for healing of the labrum. The photo on the left shows my drill guide in place as I drill my suture anchor into the glenoid. The photo on the right shows my sutures coming out of the glenoid and out of the suture anchor. They are passed through the labrum and they are now ready to be tied. This is arthroscopic footage showing my suture going around the labrum and this is an arthroscopic knot which I push through a cannula in order to firmly secure the labrum back to the glenoid. This is done in a minimally invasive technique with three small incisions, an arthroscopic camera, and small instruments used to effectively perform the repair. This is a picture sh showing the Hillsack's defect on the left. This technique is called a rompelassage where a suture anchor is placed into the Hillsack's defect. The sutures are then passed through the infraspinatus tendon in order to fill the defect and prevent recurrent dislocation. This is arthroscopic footage again of my drill guide in place. Once I drill into the glenoid socket, I then place a suture anchor into the bone. You can see in this footage the white suture anchor coming down through the drill guide into the bone. This suture anchor is firmly attached to the bone and has sutures which I will use to pass through the labrum and provide a firm labral repair. This is final arthroscopic images of my completed labral repair. As you can see, the labrum has been brought nicely back to the glenoid where it will heal over the course of three to four months. I have fixed this labrum with four suture anchors. You can also see the back of the shoulder where I've performed the romp lassage and the infraspinatus tendon is now nicely in the defect. Anteriorly, you can see the labrum is now firmly attached to the bone. In summary, Arthroscopic surgery for acute and chronic a shoulder dislocation is a safe and effective procedure. I use a minimally invasive technique which results in labral repair. When indicated, I perform a rompelassage type procedure which addresses the Hillsack's deformity and prevents recurrent dislocation. Now, this is performed in a minimally invasive technique with good results and low overall risk. As with every orthopedic surgery, the recovery requires active patient engagement and effective physical therapy. Thank you.